and gentlemen, it's great to be out here on this, well, kind of cold, kind of warm, depending where you're standing, spring day, as we come out to celebrate Easter. It's one of those weekends where everything gets busy because people want to come out to celebrate an event that they often don't know much about. Now, we come out here today um, as, as Christians from the local Bethel Evangelical Church, which is that way, and we come out here today to share with you a message of Easter. In fact, I have you on the board the statement, the big picture of Easter. Now, the reason I put that up on the board is because what I've discovered is this. We enjoy a nice day off where we get to bite the ears off a chocolate bunny, crack open a few eggs, and spend time with friends and family. There's nothing wrong with that. That's great. But what we often miss is why we actually get these bank holidays. Why is it that we actually get a day off? Why do we pause? Why do churches fill at this time of year. And what I want us to do very quickly this morning is talk to you about the big picture of Easter. And to do that, I've got three key things I want you to consider. The who of Easter, the why of Easter, and the what of Easter. Who, why, and what of Easter. Now this may come as a bit of a surprise for you, but Easter is actually about a person. Easter's about a person. Did you know that? It's not about a bunny. It's not about an egg. I'm from Australia. In Australia, we don't do the Easter bunny thing. We have Easter bilbies, okay? But it's not about the Easter bilby either. Easter is not about eggs, chocolate, bunnies. They're great, they're wonderful, but that's not what it's about. Easter is about a person. Now, if you've done religion at school or grew up watching television, you might know that Easter primarily is about a man named Jesus Christ. And I've just put a quote up here from the Bible that simply says, Christ died. You see, that's what Easter's all about. It's about a man named Jesus who died on a cross. Now, you might hear that and say, okay, fair enough, that's, that's some 2,000 years ago. But stop, about, and stop and think about it for a moment. Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago, but we get a bank holiday, we pause, we celebrate, and we remember Easter. Why? Now, if you know anything about the Roman world, you know thousands of people were crucified on the cross. If you've watched Monty Python, you know hundreds and hundreds of people were crucified on a cross. In fact, here in England, we have archaeological evidence of people being crucified. But you don't get a day off for them, do you? You don't get a break for them. No, but for Jesus, we do. Why? Because of who it was that was crucified. You see, Jesus Christ is unique. He is special. He has literally torn time in two. Everything <laughs> revolves around him. He was a man who was more than a religious teacher, more than a prophet, more than a good man. No, the Bible declares that Jesus Christ is God the Son, and he came to this earth to rescue us. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the reason we celebrate Easter is because of Jesus. Jesus is not like anyone else. He preached as one having authority, not like the others. He healed the sick, he raised the dead, he performed miracles. The world has seen no one like him. But the religious leaders hated him. And so did the Roman authorities. So what they did is they nailed Jesus to a cross. Thousands of others were nailed to a cross as well. But we don't remember them, but we do for Jesus. So let's think about that for a moment. The big picture of Easter. Who? It's about Christ dying. But why? Why do we have Easter? Why do we have Good Friday, Easter Silent Saturday, and then Resurrection Sunday? Why? Well, this is where it gets a bit more personal. Did you know Easter actually impacts you? Did you know Easter has a message for you? Do you understand that? That it's not just about Jesus dying on a cross and rising again, but there's a personal impact for you. It doesn't matter where you are from, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter your background. The message of Easter is for you. Here is why we need the message of Easter. The Bible says, Christ died for our sins. Now that's an unpopular statement today, isn't it? Sins, we don't like to think about that. We're wonderful, we're good people, we're brilliant. We don't want to talk about that old-fashioned sin. That's what the politicians do up in Westminster. That's not what we do here in Lee Park. We're good, moral, wonderful people. But the Bible actually says we've all sinned. We've all done wrong. That includes me. You know, I'm not standing out here today as a loudmouth Australian in Lee Park saying, be brilliant like me. No, 
My ancestors had very strong convictions. They were sent to Australia. I have very bad histories as well. But the good news is this, Christ died for our sins. You see, the Bible says every single one of us, from the youngest to the oldest, have done wrong. Uh, there's no one perfect. I'm going to guess there's no perfect people out here today. None of us are perfect. We've all done wrong. We've all sinned. Now, what is sin? Well, the Bible says sin is breaking of God's rules. You see, the God who made us is the God who knows us. He's the God who loves us. And he's the God that gets to tell us how we should live. You are not a mistake. You are not an accident. You are, have been made with value and purpose. God has made you. God loves you. He cares about you. But what we have done as humanity is we've turned our back on God and we've done our own thing. God in his law says, live this way. We've said, clear off God, I want to do my own thing. And we break his rules. Like commandment number nine says, don't tell lies. I mean, how many lies have you told in your life? Commandment number eight says, don't steal. Well, check out the security around here. I reckon a few people steal things. Have you ever taken something that belong to you? Commandment number six says, don't murder. But God doesn't judge us on that standard of just physical murder. No, God says hatred is the same as murder. You see, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to illustrate is this. In thought, word, and deed, all of us have done wrong. We've all sinned. And the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And there's actually a consequence for our sin. You know, if I break the law out here today, perhaps if a policeman's brave enough, he'll come along and arrest me. Maybe counsel will come along and issue me a fine. Uh, there'll be a consequence for my actions. And it's the same with God. When we break God's law, we lie and steal, or lust or hate. When we fail to love him or love our neighbor as ourselves, uh, when we do wrong, there's a consequence. And the Bible says the consequence, the payment of our sin is death. We deserve death and hell because of our sin. And that's terrible news when you think about it. But the good news is this. Christ died for our sins. You see, ladies and gentlemen, our sin proclaimed death and judgment. But the big picture of Easter is this. Who? Jesus Christ has come to die for our sins. Jesus Christ on the cross went and died and paid the penalty for our sins. He was crucified, dead and buried. And on that cross, he became sin for us. He took the punishment upon himself. And he paid the penalty that we should pay. He took our death. He took our judgment. He took our hell deserved. But ladies and gentlemen, the story doesn't finish there. The big picture of Esau. Who? Jesus. Why? Our sins. But what happened? Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. This is why we have the Friday and the Sunday. Christ died, but then he rose again from the dead, defeating sin and death. And by Jesus doing that, it declares that sin has been paid for. Jesus died, taking the death that we should pay, and then he rose again so that we could have life. We could have forgiveness of sin. You see, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter what you've done. Know this. God loves you. And God in love today says you can be forgiven of all the wrongs of the past, all your sin, because of what Jesus has done. You can't earn your way to forgiveness. You can't purchase it by good deeds or good works. You can't earn it by going to heaven. Uh, sorry, by going to church to get you to heaven. No, the only way to go to heaven, to have your sins forgiven, is to trust in Jesus. In fact, Jesus said these words, repent and believe the good news. Repent and believe the good news. And that's the response you need to give to Jesus. And this Easter, as we consider what Christ has done, that he's died for our sins and he's risen again, our response to that should be to say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for the wrong that I've done. And then we repent. To repent means you turn from your sin. You do a U-turn. You turn from your lying, your stealing, your lust, your hatred, etc. You turn from sin and you believe, you trust that Jesus died and rose again. And if you do that, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, if you would trust in Jesus today, he would completely forgive you. But the question for you today is simply this. 
When will you repent and trust in Jesus? Right now, in the centre of Leap Heart, God, in his love and kindness, offers you forgiveness of sins. He offers you a brand new start. He offers you a new life. When will you trust in Jesus? What's stopping you today from repenting and trusting in Christ? I urge you this day to consider your sin, but then consider what Jesus has done. He died, he rose again, he paid the penalty for sin. So if you would turn from it and trust in him, you'd be forgiven. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why we come out here today. We come out here because we love you and we want you to know God's love. We want you to know the way of forgiveness, the way to heaven. And today Christ offers his hand of forgiveness to you, but you must respond. And if you're here this morning, you say, actually, you know what? I need to trust in Jesus. I, I need God to forgive all my sins. What I want you to do when I finish is come chat to me. I'll be more than happy to show you from the Bible how you can know God and how you can have all your sins forgiven. But I'd also like to offer you a free gift, a free gift to anyone and everyone here in Lee Park today. I have a copy here of the Gospel of John. It's the biography of Jesus. It speaks of God's love and kindness. It tells you how you can be forgiven. And I'd love to give you one of those free of charge for anyone who wants to find out more about Jesus. So feel free to come and take one from me, from the board here, or from the table over there. We simply want you to know Jesus, the one who lived, died, and rose again. And if we as a church at Bethel Evangelical, just across the road over there next to the Workies Club, if we can be of any help, feel free to come along to the church. We're open at Sunday, 10 o'clock. You're more than welcome to come along and hear of God's love and kindness and how you personally can know the God who made you. God bless you.